name is Karen Cannell. I'd like to welcome you to this preview of MICA's newest risk management program, CSI Communication, Communication Strategies Investigated. Let's look at a few scenes from our program. Effective communication with patients has always been essential in medical practice and is the most common point of reference when we think of communication in healthcare. The content is designed in six separate modules to allow you to easily enter and leave the program as your busy schedule demands. Over the course of our interactive program, we'll prepare you to describe the impact of patient-clinician communication on healthcare outcomes and malpractice risk. Identify specific skills to enhance verbal, nonverbal, and written communication in the healthcare setting. Discuss the essentials of effective communication strategies among members of the healthcare team and recognize the patient's role as an active participant in the healthcare relationship. Is the subject of communication worth all this time and attention in today's chaotic healthcare environment? Let's examine some of the hazards of ineffective communication and then you decide. Well, at least you're home now. now. I just don't understand how I ended up in the hospital. How can you let me get so sick? Mr. Green, I have told you repeatedly that if you don't take your medication, you're going to continue to have crises such as this that are going to put you into the hospital. All I know is that instead of improving, I keep having these setbacks. This conversation isn't getting us anywhere, and I still have to examine you. Mr. Green, I have other patients waiting. That encounter didn't seem very satisfactory for either party, did it? Let's try it again with just some minor modifications and see if we get a better outcome. In addition to the visits, taking your medication is also very important. Your heart condition is very sensitive to medicine. And if you're not careful, you can get into trouble quickly. Have you had any trouble taking the medication or changing the dose each week? Well, it's hard to take them that way, so every now and then I, I skip a dose or two. Uh, can you tell me, what do you mean hard? Yeah, you know, well, since my wife's been sick, I, I've had to give up my part-time job, and, uh, and hey, things, things are a little tight. And that new medication you put me on, oh, that is very expensive. Sounds like things have been pretty hard in a lot of ways lately. Are you having trouble affording the medication? Yes, but uh, if I take it every other day, it lasts longer. Oh, I didn't realize. I'm glad you told me. Let's take a look at your medications and see if we can find a way to reduce the number of pills you have to buy. And Jeff, what do you think of these two examples? Which would you think would be the more logical or the more predictable to, to result in either a medical error or an adverse outcome? Well, certainly the first scenario demonstrates a likely lawsuit. I mean, if that patient ends up back in the hospital, he's going to blame that doctor again because there was never a good dialogue. In the second example, what I saw happening was the patient was still angry when the doctor walked in, but the doctor addressed it very differently. He did not become defensive, and he made the problems be a joint problem. He said, what can we do about helping you take your medication better? Things like that. He made it a shared responsibility and got the patient engaged. And that's m a much better experience for the patient and the therefore much less likely to result in a lawsuit. A special skill set may be needed with some of your patients. These are the so-called difficult patients. They just don't seem to follow your plan or may be disagreeable to you or your staff. It's actually more accurate to think of these as difficult relationships rather than difficult people. Routinely assess your patient's ability to understand directions and information, especially if non-compliant or difficult. Health literacy may be an underlying cause of patient management problems such as not keeping appointments, chronic lateness, non-compliance with treatment, returning incomplete forms, excessive phone calls, and overuse of the emergency room. I would get mad about something and blame them that this is not the right place for me, you're not respecting me, and walk out. And it had nothing to do with that. It was just I need to cover that I couldn't read this. I didn't, need them, I didn't want them to know that I'm walking out because I can't read. Modern health care, regardless of setting, requires a team approach. Now, I have to tell you that uh, watching this video in preparation for this program reinforced in my mind the importance of engaging the nursing staff and healthcare team in the care of, 
uh, patients after surgery. When I take that time to sit down and speak with a nurse about the things I'm looking for, they feel empowered and they want to perform better. And why? Because they're part of the team and they're part of that process. The medical record serves as a means of communication between the physician and any other health professional contributing to the patient's care, assisting in protecting the legal interest of the patient and those responsible for the patient's care, and documenting the care and services provided to the patient. Well, Dr. Brennan, how important is documentation in the overall care of patients? Well, very, very important. Um, it really follows along with the last video that we watched and how teamwork is so important. Um, if the documentation isn't there, the rest of the team taking care of a patient has really no idea of what's going on. When EMRs are implemented, there's a growing concern physicians tend to rely too heavily on standardized templates. Often these templates do not provide a place for the physician to demonstrate cognitive thinking, which is critical to a correct diagnosis. Instead, physicians may be tempted to simply check off boxes to demonstrate what the patient does not have, while leaving out specific information which allowed the physician to formulate a working diagnosis for the patient. Jeff, tell us why it's so important to document the thought process uh, in an electronic medical record when the physician makes an entry. It's a good question, Judy, and it's because in the electronic medical record, a lot of it, as we've talked about already, is just clicking on things and you're, it's graphic documentation. And there's no narrative, really, to put in what the thought process was, what your plan was, what your thinking was. And that's why I really encourage people to use those narrative blocks to put that information in an electronic medical record. It doesn't take very long to sit at the computer and type in a few lines as to what you were thinking, your thought process, your differential diagnosis, and why you were carrying out this plan on that patient. And it becomes very helpful in the defense of cases. The patient-physician relationship is the very heart of healthcare delivery. It permeates each element that we've discussed in this program. The intimacy of emotions and the private, often uncomfortable sharing of information between patient and physician require a foundation of mutual responsibilities and trust. Education leads to more informed decision by patients and is a strong foundation to facilitate self-care, thus improving clinical outcomes and reducing the frustration of all involved. Thanks, doctor. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to explain it all and to answer my question. It's my pleasure. Now, if you wouldn't mind doing something for me, because I want to make sure I haven't left anything out, could you tell me your understanding of what's going on and how I think we should proceed? I think what you saw here was an exemplary example of an informed consent. The informed consent is not the piece of paper the patient signs that goes into the medical record. The informed consent is that process between the physician and the patient where they have this dialogue about what are the options, what are the risks, what are the benefits, answering all the patient's questions, making sure the patient understands, and then the patient makes an educated decision about the course of action they want to undergo. While these examples have been with a surgical patient, the steps involved in building a relationship, soliciting the patient's agenda and hearing the patient's story, are a sound beginning to any patient encounter. Reflecting back to achieve clarification, partnering with the patient on care planning, and setting a clear course for treatment are essential in achieving the best patient outcome. With effective communication, we are in the position to deliver the best possible care for our patients because no one does it better than we do. As you can tell, just from these brief segments, there's a lot of material. However, we believe the investment of your valuable time in this educational adventure will pay a big dividend in your practice. So check it out and let us know what you think. If you would like to obtain the full program for yourself or your organization, or if you'd like more information on this topic and the many others produced by MICA Risk Management, visit our website at www.mica-insurance.com or email kcanell at mica-insurance.com. CMEs are available for appropriate candidates.